Let's look at a simple proportional feedback example. My plant consists of a rotating mass. You apply a torque T. The mass has an inertia J and there's some viscous friction B theta dot. I want to control the position theta by inputting a torque T. Write the sum of the forces for this system and we have J theta double dot is equal to applied force T minus B theta dot. That's moment of inertia times angular acceleration is equal to applied torque, which is the applied torque and the viscous friction. That leads us to the differential equation J theta double dot plus B theta dot is equal to T. Substituting in the values, we have theta double dot plus 0 0.05 theta dot is equal to 1 tenth T. I can also write the model as a transfer function. That is S theta plus 0 0.05 S theta, this is S squared, is equal to 1 tenth T, or theta over T is equal to 1 tenth S squared plus 0 0.05 S. The first step in any control system design is to look at the open loop plant. Our system has poles on the complex plane, one at zero and one at minus 0 0.05. So we have one pole here, which is an integrator, and one here that dies out with a settling time of four over 0 0.05 or around 80 seconds. So very slow moving system. From the open loop analysis, we can immediately see that we can't satisfy the specifications just by putting torque in. The integrator right here is the key. This means that we are integrating the torque. And physically what happens is when we apply constant torque to the motor, the motor continues to spin. Eventually it reaches some terminal velocity when the applied torque balances the velocity times the damping ratio, but it still continues to spin. That's the integration, which means that the motor will never reach a final value of theta. And we want to be able to control theta. So with the integrator here, we cannot have the motor move to a fixed value of theta the hint that we're going to need some sort of a control system on this. I'm going to do the control systems design two ways. One, I'm going to set it up via differential equations, and then I'm going to set it up via block diagrams. The differential equation for the system is theta double dot plus 0 0.05 theta dot is equal to one tenth t. For proportional control, we're going to say T is equal to KP times theta desired minus theta. Theta desired will be what the user supplies, where we want the motor to go to. Theta is a measured value that we take from the plant. KP is the gain that we'll use for our design. Substituting this in and doing a little quick algebra, we're left with this. We have a second order system. We can see that we can vary one parameter. And so the design question becomes, what value of KP should we pick so that the transient response of this second order system is what we desire? Now let's go and look at the same thing using transfer functions. We begin with the plant, which is 1 tenth S squared plus 0 0.05 S. The input is torque. We are going to use proportional feedback. So torque will be KP times theta desired minus theta. This is called a unity feedback form. There is no gain block in the feedback. The gain is right here. And this is very common. And we're going to use this form a lot because it has some nice properties. So the way the system works is we take the plant, we measure the output, we compare that to what the user wants, take the difference between what the user wants and where we actually are, multiply by KP, that becomes the new torque value. And now we have a continually changing torque value between theta d minus theta is greater than zero, we apply a positive torque. Eventually, the motor goes past where we want. Now, theta is larger than theta d. Now, this is a negative value, so the torque sign changes, and we drive the motor the opposite direction. If we have the system designed correctly, we won't oscillate back and forth, but an improperly designed system would oscillate back and forth around the theta desired value. We can then do the block diagram algebra on this. This is G over one plus GH. So we have KP over 10 over S squared plus 0 0.05 S over one plus KP. Simplify and we're left with KP over 10 S squared plus 0 0.05 S 
plus k p over 10. As we saw in the original discussion of proportional feedback, this characteristic equation is comprised of the original plant denominator and k times the plant numerator which gives us the root locus form that we're going to use. We now have the same problem as we did before. Given the characteristic equation, what is the value of P we should choose to give the desired transient response? So in both cases, the control design comes down to finding values of Kp. And in both cases, the closed loop characteristic equation is S squared plus 0.05S plus 1 tenth Kp. You get there whether you use transfer functions or differential equations. Time to find a value for Kp. There are two possible ways to do this. One is root locus, the second is directly. Let's look at the root locus approach. In root locus, we start by plotting the root locus of the system. Our characteristic equation again is s squared plus 0.05s plus 1 tenth kp equals 0. We divide that into a part that's multiplied by kp and a part that's not multiplied by kp. This is the d polynomial, that's the n polynomial. Plot the roots of the d polynomial there here and here, 0 0.05. These, of course, are the open loop poles of the system. Next, we go for the open loop zeros. There are none, which means that we have two zeros at infinity because the order of n is two less than the order of d. You can refer back to previous notes. Those zeros are here, so the root locus looks like this with this cutoff point at minus 0 0.025. The red line now shows us all possible solutions for the system. By the way, this corresponds to a settling time of 4 over 0 0.025, which is 40 seconds. So we can have the system overdamped, or we can have it underdamped. And if it is underdamped, the settling time, regardless of the frequency or the damping ratio, will always be 40 seconds. So what I want to do is find the spot that corresponds to the damping ratio 0.7. That's approximately along a 45 degree line. So right here and here correspond to the desired pole locations. Root locus tells us what the possible solutions are, it does not tell us what the value of k is for those solutions. So now I have to find the value of k that corresponds to that. And the way I'm going to do that is just by brute force. So I take my differential equation, my equation s squared plus 0.05s plus 1 tenth ap is equal to 0. I pick values of k and I start figuring out what the roots are. So I'm going to make a little table here, ap. Let's see what's happening. It's following the root locus. We had two real poles. They get closer and closer together here. Eventually, they meet at 0 0.025, and then they start going with a real part of 0 0.025, plus or minus this imaginary part, and they're going up down the imaginary axis. I want to find the spot where they're right here. This is along a 45 degree line, so I'm really looking for something that's 0 0.025 plus or minus 0 0.025. Desired location equals minus 0 0.025 plus or minus 0 0.025i because that lies along a 45 degree line. So we can see I've already passed 0 0.025. So somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.015 lies the solution. And what the root locus did for me is it told me what the possible solutions are. That is, can I even achieve what I want? And when I start doing the iteration, it helps me zoom in on the spot that I want to hit. So with one more iteration, I can find that 0 0.013, which is somewhere in the middle of there, gives me minus 0 0.025 plus or minus approximately 0 0.025i. And this is the solution I want. Therefore, Kp should be equal to 0 0.013. This iteration can be somewhat of a pain, and for higher order systems, it's even more difficult. Fortunately, there are tools that do this for you, and eventually we're going to use MATLAB, and there's an SSO tool, single input, single output design tool that can do all of these steps for you, help make the design much simpler. The other way to find Kp is to find it directly. Now, this method doesn't always work, but in this case, the direct method is much simpler. The direct method, you write down the desired closed loop characteristic equation, then match the coefficients to the closed loop characteristic equation you have for your system. So we need to find the desired closed loop characteristic equation. In this case, there are two ways to do that. I'm going to first start by just using the standard form second order system. So closed loop characteristic equation desired. We'll have the form squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. 
For my specifications, I know that zeta is equal to 0.7, so I can now match coefficients. So I match the coefficients of the system, s squared, s squared, this term, the s term, and the s term. So that means that 0 0.05 must be equal to 2 times 0 0.7 times omega n, and I match this term. And that tells me that 1 nth kp must be equal to omega n squared. We now have two equations and two unknowns. And with a little bit of algebra, here we go, we can solve for omega n and then substitute in and solve for kp. And we're left with kp is equal to 0 0.0127, which is approximately what we had before, 0 0.0. One, three. So, so another way you could do the direct method is to write down the desired characteristic equation just right from the root locus. I'm going to go back to the root locus here. And I've done the root locus. I know that a possible solution lies right here, which is approximately 0 0.025 plus or minus 0 0.025i. Now this solution is going to work because I know that is a possible solution. So I could write the desired system. We'll have poles at S plus 0 0.025 plus 0 0.025i and S plus 0 0.025 minus 0 0.025i. This is a second order system. Do the algebra and we're left with this equation. That means that this system has a poles at 0 0.025 plus or minus 0 0.025i. So this is the desired closed loop characteristic equation. And now I compare that to my original system, which was s squared plus 0 0.05s plus 1 nth kp equal to 0. Match coefficients. I'm left with 1 nth kp is equal to 0 0.00125, or kp is equal to 0 0.0125. And I should emphasize that this method here, I write down the characteristic equation that I want directly, only works if you know a valid characteristic equation. And I know that that will be a valid characteristic equation. It's a possible solution because it lies on the root locus. If I, for example, said, oh, I want the poles at s plus n, s plus 11. Well, this is a second order characteristic equation. Now I try to match the coefficients with the original system. It's not going to work. I'll have 0 0.05 here has to be equal to 21. Well, that's not going to happen. See, immediately when I try to match this with this, coefficients don't match, which means that I can never have the system with poles at minus 10 and minus 11. So the method of writing down the desired characteristic equation only works if you know a valid desired characteristic equation. The final step is to do a solution to verify our results. And if you plot the step response for the system, find that the step response looks something like this.